Hey art friends, it's Elizabeth. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to play three octave arpeggios. We will be working on jumping octaves with the left hand. Now there are two keys to playing this quickly. The first one is placing while playing. Now you're very familiar with this because I've been talking about placing while playing for a long time. But this is even more important that you do it because you're moving a long distance. Your hand is jumping. It's moving more than just a couple inches. So you've got to be ahead of the game. You've got to get there quickly and as early as possible. The second key to success is reading the patterns in the music, not the individual notes. Think about when you're learning how to read words. You start out learning the letters and the sounds, and then you learn the blends uh, that letters together make, like an SH or a TH, but then eventually you learn how to read the entire syllables all as one, and then you start to learn how to read entire words and recognize it without thinking about each individual letter in it. It's the same thing with learning how to read music. You need to be able to recognize these groups, these patterns, and see them and interpret them all as one, as opposed to figuring out each individual note name. Look at the music here. I could look at this and figure out it's a C, an E, and a G, but it's gonna be much faster and more efficient if I'm able to look at this measure, take it in all as one, and see that it's an arpeggio. It's that one, three, five pattern the intervals so that I can just make that shape with my left hand and get it onto the harp quickly. Because of muscle memory, I'm able to open my hand and land on those notes as opposed to figuring them out one at a time. So because I can see these as groups and I'm basically reading each measure individually as opposed to each note, I can do it much faster. As soon as your left hand plays a measure, it must immediately jump up or down to place for the next measure. So I'm gonna play my first one, one, two, three, and it's gonna immediately jump up here while my right hand is playing. Then I'm gonna play my left hand while my right hand places back on the exact same notes. And now as my right hand plays, my left hand has to immediately go down and place on the next set of notes, which is D, F, and A. Then while my left hand plays, my right hand will go up to the next one. My right hand's not moving very much. It's playing these three notes, then playing them again. These three notes, playing them again. It's a very small movement. The left hand is here, 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 here. It's going very far each time. So I'm gonna to have to be very efficient with those movements and not wait to start the hand going in that direction. Remember that when you play high, you have to raise your elbow so that you don't end up with a weird angle with your wrist. When my left hand goes up that high, if I don't raise my elbow, it'll look like this and I won't be able to play very well. It'll be bad hand position, I'll have bad sound, it'll be tense, versus if I raise my elbow, I'm able to keep my wrist and my fingers at the same angle, no matter if they're playing down here at the bottom or playing all the way, way up here at the top that I can barely reach because I've got my hand pretty much in my face here. But because my elbow is up, my fingers are still at the same angle and they're able to play the same way. Now, don't worry, we're not going actually quite that high. We're going here, but they are gonna be going up each time. So by the time we reach our final one, it is gonna be, and then we're gonna play that C to end it. So let's play through some of this together. Notice that our tempo marking is a dotted half note. So I did not put a number for the quarter note, even though we have quarter notes. I put 70 for the dotted half note. That means every three beats or every measure is gonna be 70 beats per minute. 
Now I could have written this using a quarter note. I could have said quarter note equals something, but it would have been pretty fast. So dotted quarter note equals 70 to basically uh, change that into a quarter note to transfer it, we would just have to do a little bit of math. So a quarter note, there's three quarter notes and every one dotted half note. So I will take that number 70, multiply it by three, and that'll give me my number, my beats per minute for the quarter note. Well, 70 times three is 210. Yes, a metronome can beat 210 beats per minute, but it's going to be very, very fast. And even though it's the same tempo, you're still playing at the same speed. You'll play the notes at a certain tempo. It's going to feel faster to you. When you hear 210 beats per minute, it raises your heart rate. It raises your adrenaline. You start feeling, oh, this is really fast. I don't know if I can keep up with this. Versus when you only hear one beat for every measure or 70 beats per minute, it doesn't feel as fast and it's not likely to get you nervous or get your heart rate up. Even though we're really still playing the notes at the same speed, it just gives the appearance of not being as intense. So that's why I chose to write it as a dotted half note equals 70 rather than a quarter note equals 210. This is 70 beats per minute. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's pretty fast. We're gonna be playing this pretty quickly. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, that's not how fast you have to play it right now. That's our goal or our performance tempo. Now, let's listen to what it sounds like if I have it clicking 210 beats per minute. This is 210 beats per minute. It's the same speed. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's the same as what I played, but it sounds a lot more intense. It's gonna make you more nervous when you have it clicking that many times. So that's why I recommend if you're using a metronome, try to keep it between at least 60 beats per minute, but no more than say 150 beats per minute. Remember, if you're getting less than 60 beats per minute, try subdividing or having it click on those half beats. So if I was playing this one, two, three, that's really slow. So I might have it count one and two and three and. Hearing those ands helps me keep the beat and feel where it's gonna be. The same way, if I'm playing a lot of notes really fast, I don't have to click every single one. I don't have time to say one and two and three and one and two and three and I'm gonna run out of breath. I'm gonna hyperventilate. But if I can just say one, two, three, one, two, three, even that might be hard. So I might go one, 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 one. So if you're only counting fewer beats, you're not gonna run out of breath as much and it's not gonna raise your heart rate. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your tempos. When you're watching the videos that I have provided for you where I'm playing the piece or the exercise slow, medium, and fast, you may notice sometimes there's extra beats on those slow ones. Sometimes by the time you get to the fast video, there's not as many beats. It's not because something has changed, it's just that that's the number of beats that's going to best help you play the piece at that tempo. One more note on this piece. It is only going up. I don't have you doing that exercise going back down. So look at the last line from measure 25. We're on B. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then C is a little different. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then it's going to end with this second finger on C. You're not continuing up the scale. So make sure that you are watching out for the pattern, not just going on it forever and ever until you run out of strings, but thinking about where's the end and is the end different at all so that you can be ready for it and end with that nice C sound. So let's recap. In this lesson, we learned how to play three finger arpeggios where we are jumping between octaves. The left hand is playing below and above 
the right hand moving up with each new pattern. We talked about the importance of placing while playing and that left hand moving, not waiting to start going the direction it needs to go. As soon as it finishes playing the thumb, it needs to start moving either down or up depending on which part you're on. We talked about looking at each part as a whole, seeing the whole arpeggio or the whole measure as opposed to looking at each individual note. We also talked about tempos and using a tempo that is going to work for what you're trying to do there. Using a beat per minute that's going to not get your heart rate up or not make you run out of breath if you're trying to count it out loud. If you're playing slower, yes, count the ands. But if you're playing faster, you have to start using fewer beats so that you can get it all in and so that it doesn't raise your heart rate or cause too much adrenaline and make you nervous when you're trying to play it. We also talked about watching the end, knowing where you're going, how long am I going to continue this pattern, where does it finish so that I can be ready for that. Now let's go practice. Mm -hmm.